Hi guys, in pursuit of transferring technical knowledge and just to gear up for the new engineering entrant, myself Pranob is here to deliver today's presentation, Power Transformer Part 11. As the topic is of the continuation, so for, so for your con convenience, the link of the previous one is given under the description box. Let's start with window space factor. Window space factor is also a pertinent point to consider during designing of a transformer. The KVA output of a transformer has to depend on flux density and ampere turns where the flux density is always be related to code area and the ampere turns is related to window area. Therefore, the rated KVA output of a transformer has close relation both to the area of the core and window. The space inside the core is designated as window. The window area is shared by the total copper acquired by the primary and secondary windings and their requisite insulations. Window space factor can be analyzed through the following ratio. Window space factor equals to conductor area in window divided by total area of window. Now, output equation as follows. For single phase code type and shell type transformer, output Q equals to 2.22, F is the frequency, BM, delta, KW, AW, AI into 10 to the power minus 3 KVA where F is the frequency in hertz, BM is the maximum flux density in core, delta is the permissible current density, ampere per meter square, KW is the window space factor, AW is the window area in meter square, AI is the cross-sectional area of core. The second equation that is for three phase code type transformer Q equals to 3.33 F BM delta KW AW AI into 10 to the power minus 3 KVA. Third one for three phase shell type transformer Q equals to 6.66 F BM delta KW, AW, AI into 10 to the power minus three KVA. Now, phi M equals to main magnetic flux, that is AI, BM, Weber. Therefore, BM, that is maximum flux density in core, equals to phi m divided by ai tesla. From equations a, b, c can be written as for single phase code type and cell type transformer q equals to 2.22 f phi m delta kw aw into 10 to the power minus three KVA. For three phase code type transformer, it can be written as 3.33 F phi M delta KW AW into 10 to the power minus three KVA. And for three phase shell type transformer, Q equals to 6.66 F phi M delta K 
kW aW into 10 to the power minus 3 kVA. Now, phi m denotes the generated main flux, that is the magnetic loading at the core area. Electric loading is thereby denoted by the primary side ampere turns. With the increase of magnetic loading, that is phi m, there will be an increase in core flux density. And that will instigate the increase of core loss component, resulting a loss in operational efficiency of the subject transformer. Accordingly, with the electric loading to increase, then obviously it requires an increase in number of turns causing an increase in resistance and hence that will instigate to enhance the copper loss component. So designing with the selection of higher values of phi m or primary side ampere turns is not at all effective as in both the cases operational efficiency will obviously be reduced. Again, I repeat. So designing with the selection of higher values of phi m or primary side ampere turns is not at all effective as in both the cases, operational efficiency will obviously be reduced. It is always be better to analyze the actual flow path of useful flux and leakage flux as generated. Magnetic core will be, will be the usual path of useful flux that links and be responsible in transferring the energy electromagnetically from prime primary to secondary side. Leakage flux that has to link only with the primary or secondary winding and be responsible in imparting inductance to the windings. Actual flow path of the leakage flux would have to depend on the geometrical configuration of the coils and the adjacent iron masses. Transformer output equation therefore relates to one rated KV output of a transformer to the area of core and window. Number two, KVA output depends on flux density and ampere turns. Number three, flux density is related to core area. Number four, low voltage and high voltage windings, ampere turns, is related to window area. Important points to be noted, the higher the operational voltage of the transformer, the smaller will be the window space factor, as the window area may have to increase in order to provide more space for insulation of the winding. Number two, window space factor has an important parameter through which there would have been effectively assessed for better utilization of the prescribed window area. Both the points I again repeat. The higher the operational voltage of the transformer, the smaller will be the window space factor as the window area may have to increase in order to provide more space for insulation of the windings. Number two, window space factor has an important parameter through which there would have been effectively assessed for better utilization of the prescribed window area. 
developments and introductions of better grades of code material. As the transformer is an electromagnetic conversion device, so since inception, a constant developments and introductions of better grades of core material are being are being vigorously spearheaded by the renowned steel manufacturers. Introduction of silicon steel in manufacturing of core material has become a major breakthrough in transformer industry. Thereby, according to the ability to carry magnetic flux, silicon steel has been categorized as non-oriented non silicon steel, hot rolled grain oriented, that is HRGO, silicon steel, cold rolled grain oriented CRGO silicon steel, HIB, laser scribed and mechanically scribed. HIB, laser scribed and mechanically scribed core materials are the improved versions of CRGO and as a priority, to minimize coal loss and energy saving issues, the usage of HIB core materials are also increasing. Generally, for 400 kV and above, some utility is very specific for the use of H1 HIB transformer core materials. The H1B grain oriented steel grades that is HGOS were developed in the early of 1970s and in mid 1980s and in mid 1980s laser scribed material was developed again i repeat the h1b hib grain oriented steel grades HGOS were developed in the early of 1970s and in mid 90s, 90, 1980s, lesser scribed material was developed. In grain oriented steel, the grains have always been all aligned almost parallel to the direction of rolling of the steel, that is, length of the steel. Usually, the angle of distortion would have to be allowed maximum 7% for conventional grain oriented steel and less than 3% for HIB grain oriented steel. By implementing HIB grain oriented steel in core manufacturing of large transformers has meant to imply a drastic reduction of hysteresis loss. Having addition on having an addition of 3.2% of silicon as an alloy in grain oriented steel, the resistivity of the steel has thereby been enhanced, resulting a significant reduction of eddy current flow. To restrict interlaminar eddy current losses. A coating of carlite insulation is also to be prescribed for using on the steel sheet. Property of carrying magnetic flux denotes permeability of that magnetic material. Again, I repeat, property of carrying magnetic flux denotes permeability of that magnetic material. Modern silicon steels materials used for code design have permeability in the order of 1500 compared with one for air, which has the meaning to assess the ability of a steel core to carry magnetic flux 
of the order of 1500 times than that of air. Transformer designers would have to optimize the ultimate performance of core by using efficient design and manufacturing technologies. Code building technology has also involved from the non-mitered non, non to mitered and then to the step lab construction. Code building technology has also improved from the non-mitered to mitered and then to the step lab construction. Major significance of using HIV grain oriented steel grades. Before implication of using grain oriented steel in the process of core manufacturing, designers had to prefer core having rectangular interleaved corners and as per core cross section, the size of the yoke would have become large compared to the limb section. In case of large power transformer, its yoke section had therefore become much heavier in weight as well as increase in height resulting a significant increase in overall dimension of the transformer. By adoption of grain oriented steel in core manufacturing process, cross-sectional area of the core has become so reduced that the yoke and limb cross-section would have become identical in three-limbed construction for the same capacity three-phase transformer. This evolution has resulted a dramatic change in the operating flux density of code material during overexcitation, which ultimately leads to a significant impact on the overall dimension and material cost of the transformer, keeping the rating and output criteria same. HIB still has an improved version of code material than CRG grade still. Though its magnetic saturation level is more or less same as that of CRG grade, but still using as code material, it has the property to have lesser loss in magnetizing component. Still has the grains, which consist of domains. These domains have electrical charges in any random direction. These domains have electrically charged in any random directions. If the grain orientation within the steel material is rather close to perfect, then refinement of its domain can be carried out su successfully. This domain refinement has made an effect to reduce the magnetic losses of steel material. Therefore, in the case of HIB steel, the domain refinement is usually done. HIB steel is often produced with the support of domain refinement tools, such as laser scratching, plasma jet irradiation, spark ablation, group mark making, chemical treatment, or coating stress. As having application of domain refinement, HIB steel is a treated high permeability steel and by using in core manufacturing process, it is possible to obtain the core loss lower by 5% to 10% than the untreated high permeability steel that is CRGO grade of steel. 
however by that domain refinement practically does not have any change in the static hysteresis loss characteristics hib steel is designated as high permeability material and has also exhibited significantly lower losses at higher polarization that is above 1.7 tesla which in turn could have been achieved at significantly lower magnetic field strength depending on application of power and distribution transformers the selection of core material has to be done based on two most important parameters which are low power loss and high saturation polarization here it is also what to be mentioned that the selection of material as used for magnetic shielding purpose would have to be made on the basis of the material magnetic permeability only as because in this case the loss factor criteria of the material is not so much indicative most important one it is also what to be mentioned that the selection of material as used for magnetic shielding purpose would have to be made on the basis of the material magnetic permeability only as because in this case the loss factor criteria of the material is not so much indicative the important stages of core material development that has been largely accepted throughout the world by all reputed transformer manufacturer for core electrical steel grid hrgo that is hot rolled grain oriented thickness 0.35 mm industrial production started from 1934 onwards impact on hysteresis loss reduced area of hysteresis loop by addition of silicon and reduction of impurities especially carbon impact on eddy current loss negligible number 2 crgo that is cold rolled grain oriented thickness of 0.28 mm industrial production started from 1939 onwards impact on hysteresis loss alignment of grains within plus minus 6% of rolling direction reduces hysteresis loss impact on eddy current loss as because the thinner sheets of crgo leads to reduction in eddy current loss thinner sheets as used for crgo leads to reduction in eddy current loss electrical steel grade of high permeability steel industrial production started from 1965 onwards impact on hysteresis loss better alignment of grains results in 30 to 40% reduction in hysteresis loss at the same time impact on eddy current loss stress coating reduces eddy current loss and susceptibility to handling induced loss increases domain refined steel domain refined steel industrial production started from 1983 onwards no impact no special impact 
on hysteresis loss, only impact on the eddy loss, that is reduced domain size, reduces eddy current loss. Now discuss with mineral oil. Using mineral oil as insulating liquid for power transformer. Why it is used? Stainless, stainless transformer was in dry type and small in size and had no concept of using mineral oil as a transformer coolant. In production industry, where it was understood that to build higher capacity, the life of a transformer might have been directly linked to the fundamental role of insulating liquids to dissipate heat and to protect the transformer's solid insulation, then mineral oil had been identified as a readily available solution. In 1887, Elihu Thompson spanned March 29, 1853 to March 13, 1937. An English-born electrical engineer working for Westinghouse in the United States patented the idea of using mineral oil as a transformer cooling and insulating medium. Mineral oil in power transformer has been widely used not only because of its availability and low cost, but also the oil has excellent electrical insulating properties and is being stable at high temperatures. As the liquid plays an important role to provide an electrical insulation and also acts as a heat transfer fluid, so the performance reliability of the transformer is therefore be directly related to quality of the oil. While a transformer is in prolonged operation, then the insulating oil is continuously subject to have electrical and mechanical stresses for which original chemical properties of the oil might have been changed gradually, rendering it ineffective for its intended purpose. In order to justify the quality of the oil, following electrical and chemical properties should have to be periodically measured by applying standard test procedures and the test result must be compared with the prescribed value. One, electrical properties, specific resistance or resistivity measured at 27 degrees centigrade and 90 degrees centigrade. Number two, conductivity. Number three, dielectric strength, that is breakdown voltage. Number four, dielectric distribution factor, that is tan delta. Chemical properties, water content, number two, acidity, number three, sludge content. Physical properties, one, interfacial tension, flexibility of the oil to have the movement in an electrical field. Number three, viscosity, number four, flash point, number five, pore point. Transformer oil, it's an important one. Just to note, transformer oil must have the following properties which make a particular oil eminently suitable for the best available heat conduction and electrical insulation. Number one, must possess excellent dielectric properties resulting in minimum power loss. Number two, greater electrical resistivity, which would have been the 
fundamental property that leads to resist electric current by providing sufficient insulation values between windings and the metallic framework. High flash point, not less than 160 degrees centigrade, and greater thermal stability would have to facilitate reduction in evaporation losses. Long life performance and excellent aging characteristics, even under severe electromechanical stresses. Number five, sulfur or its compounds as impurities cause sulfur or its compounds as impurities cause the formation of sludge and also attack metal parts. So devoid of corrosive sulfur would have to allow an enhanced stability and protection against corrosion. Number six, wider operating temperature range resulting from higher flash and lower pour, pour point. Seven, while choosing the oil, sludge formation properties would have to be considered as the oil slowly forms semi-solid hydrocarbons. Basically, the two primary functions of the liquid were to dissipate heat through convection, heat transfer, and to act as an insulating material providing dielectric strength. Apart from these functions, another most important role that has been played by the transformer oil is to protect from interaction of atmospheric oxygen with the cellulose made paper insulation of the winding. The transformer oil thus to be acted as a barrier between the atmospheric oxygen and the cellulose, that is abstaining from direct contact between the two. In this way, Transformer oil prevents the oxidation of cellulose made paper insulating of the winding. In this way, transformer oil prevents the oxidation of cellulose made paper insulation of the winding. Atmospheric oxygen and moisture serve as a source of oxygen, whereas the rate of oxidation also depends on the oil temperature. Higher the oil temperature, faster will be the oxidative breakdown of the oil, resulting the formation of the semi-solid hydrocarbon termed as sludge. So, If somehow the hot oil is prevented from coming into contact with atmospheric air, then obviously sludge formation can be greatly reduced. The acidity of oil has also been the influencing factor for accelerating the oxidation process in the oil and for which that has to expedite sharp deterioration of the insulation property of paper insulating insulation of winding. In the presence of moisture, the acidity has also to instigate the process of rusting of iron part of the transformer. Thus, we observe that transformer oil has great importance and it does not only totally acts as a cooling medium, having with dielectric strength, rather it does many other things to keep transformer performance healthy. Again, I repeat, 
Thus, we observe that transformer oil has great importance and it does not only acts as a cooling medium having with dielectric strength, rather it does many other things to keep transformer performance healthy. With time, mineral insulating oil would have been categorized by the extensive advancement in processing technology of fractional distillation and treatment of crude petroleum. <clears throat> now let's see the characteristics of transformer oil and their acceptable requirement as per IS 335993. Appearance. It should be clear, transparent, and free from suspended matter or sediments. Density at 29.5 degrees centigrade. It should be within 0 0.84 to 0 0.89 gram per centimeter cube. Uh, kin kinetic vis viscosity at 27 degrees centigrade, maximum 30 centi strokes. Kinematic viscosity at 50 degrees centigrade, maximum 9.6 centi strokes. Interfacial tension at 27 degrees centigrade, minimum 0 0.04 Newton per meter. Flash point, minimum 140 degrees centigrade. Port point, maximum minus six degrees, six degrees centigrade. Acid number, maximum 0 0.03 milligram KOH per gram. Dielectric strength, that is breakdown voltage. New unfiltered oil, oil, minimum 30 kV RMS. Dielectric dissipation factor 10 delta at 90 degrees centigrade, maximum 0 0.002. Specific resistance, that is resistivity at 90 degrees centigrade, minimum. 35 into 10 to the power 12 ohm centimeter. Specific resistance resistivity at 27 degrees centigrade, minimum 1500 into 10 to the power 12 ohm centimeter. Oxidation stability, neutralization value after oxidation, maximum 0 0.04 milligram KOH per gram. Total sludge after oxidation, maximum 0.1% by weight. Water content, maximum 50 ppm. Dielectric permittivity, epsilon at 20 degrees centigrade, 2.1 to 2.4 farad per meter. Breakdown stress, at 20 degrees centigrade and 50 hertz frequency, 15 to 20 kV per millimeter. Let's stop here, further to be continued at later stage. Thank you. Thank you for listening the video. Kindly do like, share, and subscribe. Your subscriptions would encourage to post more videos. Also share your comments or feedbacks inside the dedicated comment section. If you have any suggestions or specific topic you want, then let me know in the comment section. Thank you.